The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazic Seeds. Werner Tobin here for another episode of The Sharp Edge, joined again by Greg Stewart, Mazix Agronomist. How's it going, Greg? Good, good. Hey, Byrne, how are you? I'm pretty good. Hey, it's uh, pretty awesome. We are here in Cortland, Ontario, down at uh, Van Meer Farms, and I'm standing in front of a 32-row strip tool unit. Um, Greg, that's quite a machine. Why is it on The Sharp Edge? Ah, uh, yes, that is quite a machine. Is there another 32-row strip tiller in captivity? I doubt it. And so uh, we're here today to talk to Greg Vermeersch, he and his team have uh, put this together. Uh, obviously, components coming from different places, but a fair bit of engineering to put it all together to make it work in this system. So today, we talked to Greg about his strip tiller, about integrating cover crops, about fertility, some really good stuff on a really big piece of equipment. Mm. Here's Greg and Greg. Uh, good to be with you today. The first question that everyone will want me to ask is equipment size. You've got a 32 row strip tiller, a 32 row planter, 16 row heads on the combine. Talk to me a little bit about the, uh, the thought process that's gone in to going that big on the equipment front. In Norfolk County, we have a lot of smaller fields. So the larger equipment allows us to do one headland and it just saves passes when it comes to side dressing and combining later. So we're able to run larger equipment and do one headland and also with the uh, strip till unit and the planner, we can square up our corners so we don't leave dead areas in the corner of some of the smaller farms. Right on, so, so now let's talk about the, the strip tiller itself. Uh, 32 rows, I don't know whether there's another 32 row strip tiller in captivity. Can you, can you give us just a little rundown on how you put this unit together? Uh, geez, it started with a lot of planning. Um, basically took a DB80 planner frame and then we found some row units that really matched up with our earlier tillage program with um, just some wavy coulter similar to the RTS. And then just basically instead of broadcasting fertilizer, we just condensed it between the blades. So we're keeping the fertilizer within the, let's say six to eight inch range that we're trying to hit with the planter. And that's basically all the tillage we need in the spring for uh, our area. So two coulters, Spring only, I'm assuming you don't run in the fall? No fall tillage yet. Maybe on the heavier soils, we might have to start. Um, we did get away with it this year though. We had nice conditions and um, we did raise our check valve on the bags to double the amount it was last year to get that penetration. Yeah. And we changed our blade configuration to a little more aggressive waves. Um, in the sand, it's just a little harder to get stuff to move. So those are a few of the changes we made this cool, year cool. on it. So the bar itself though is, uh, the, the toolbar is bought, the units, you've brought the units in, yep. but the construction, the assembly of the entire thing was, was you and your team, right? Yeah, we have a very talented bunch of guys here at the farm and uh, some great guys to work with as well as far as imagination goes and just solving problems. So here's the idea I want to do and then we sat down and who's gonna solve what is, you know, can the Alari uh, tank push 80 feet at the rates we wanted and the speeds we wanted. And would the row units have, being 32, would we have enough power to pull it, keeping in the 400 horsepower range? Right. So some things like that. Good, good, hey, that's exciting stuff. So let's talk a little bit about cover crops. Uh, you're on some sandier ground. I'm assuming organic matter is important to you and you're trying to integrate cover crops and the strip till. How's that working for you? So far, so good. Um, we're playing with about 50 pounds of cover crop rise, kind of our average. Um, good and bad right now we're finding, but for the most part, uh, with the elimination of tillage and everything's done with the strip now, it's been pretty good. We're happy with the results so far. So cover crop rye going down in the fall. Yeah. And then uh, you're, are you doing any fall fertilization at all? You're not running the strip tiller in the fall no, at all. No, we're just doing, like we do um, a 50 pound rye broadcast mixed with the potash so it's okay. all done in one application in the fall and right. generally that's pretty good as far as the catch goes it's pretty even right and then hit the strips in the spring uh, one time and how closely do you generally follow your planter after you've strip tilled into that rye oh it, it can be like two weeks later oh like, really it doesn't seem to really matter the strip till does a nice job even if it hasn't been burned off yet it kind of moves the cover crop out of the way 
So it really doesn't have much vegetation left in the strip that bothers the planter at all. So okay. it works so well. Then, so a, a question then about killing the rye uh, in the spring. You know, we traditionally thought that rye needed to be killed off, you know, two weeks before you got there with the corn planter. Uh, where are you at in terms of killing the rye relative to your corn planting date? Oof, we're all over the map with that one. A <laughs> um, bunch of trials going on this year. We did try probably two weeks ahead, but we're also trying to save that pass as well. So we did some after it was stripped, and then we did some late emergence uh, or early emergence corn. So the corn would be like three leaf already. Then we'd go in and terminate stuff. And I think right now, either the really early termination or the really late termination seems to be the best to the middle. Just isn't quite where we'd like to see it. Yeah. Intriguing. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about fertilizer. Uh, your Alari cart, uh, you've done some modifications to it. What's your capacity? How many pounds are you applying on average in the strip? And so what does that give you per acres per fill with this, with this unit? Um, it originally started at 4.5 ton with the Alari uh, tank. So then we modified that to about 10 ton now. So we're putting down 350 pounds. We're probably traveling anywhere from seven to eight mile an hour with it to get uh, everything mixed in nice. Um, 50, 55 acres is where we're running, depends on the fills and stuff, but you know, it's, it's a nice number, I think. Right, and so uh, nitrogen in the zone, uh, potash in the zone, I think we, you, you're not putting a whole lot, because you're broadcasting potash, you're not putting much potash in the strip tiller. Yeah. But, it, uh, but, but you're putting a fair chunk of nitrogen in that strip ahead of the corn planter. Yeah. And, and, and therefore, with this nice starter blend in the strip, do you need to have any fertilizer on the planter at all? Uh, great question. We're, we're putting probably about 70 pounds down through the strip right now. Nitrogen? Of nitrogen, right. yeah. Um, the fall potash takes the pressure away from the spring strip till. Right. So right now we're doing some tests at uh, 10 gallons on the planter is what we run. Originally, I wasn't too sure if I would always be able to stay on the strip, so it's kind of like my little insurance policy that the fields look nice and, you know, maybe there is a little kick to uh, getting the early N on right beside the seed. Right. So, I don't know right now. Okay. We'll tell you at the end of the year <laughs> if it works Fair or enough. if there's difference. But your P and your K, sulfur, other micros, they're all going into the strip. They're not on the planter. No, everything's in the strip. Ah, uh, cool. So, Pulling the nitrogen off the planter perhaps is 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 a possibility if your testing uh, leads you leads you that way, right? Yes, yes, that's definitely another opportunity. All right, so you've tried a bunch of things in your life, Greg. Uh, when you when you consider where you're at now, 32 row strip tiller, fertilizer in the strips, rye cover crops, do you think you've arrived at a system that is? Uh, best for you or is there some tweaking still to be done? Um, it's probably our most efficient system right now um, for fuel, labor, um, hours, things like that. We're still tweaking a few things. We may, like we talked about earlier, try to get the liquid off the planter if there's no warrant for it and maybe put a little more end down in the strip. Um, we're also working on maybe changing the rate of the cover crops in the fall a little bit, and then also the termination timing. But as far as the hours and the fuel consumption goes, we're really happy with the strip uh, till unit. Like it's probably 10 to 13 gallons per hour is what it's burning, which is I think pretty respectable for the acres it's covering. Right, right, right. Yeah. Hey, uh, great stuff. Thanks so much for talking to us today. Great, thanks for having me guys. So there you have it. Um, Greg, <sighs> Really interesting the approach here. I mean, we got a lot of lighter ground here, a lot of sandy ground, and Greg really is using this as a key tool in managing organic matter. Yeah, so the nice idea here that has been emphasized by Greg and his team is uh, they need to build organic matter, so they need to reduce tillage, and they need to integrate cover crops. And uh, this is a system that's trying to pull those components together. together. Yeah. Final thing, um, fertility, fertilizer here. We've got some on the planter, we've got some, we've got a big tank here. Um, talk about his approach here. I mean, like, he, you know, he's fine-tuned both ends. Yeah, here. yeah. So this is one of my, this is one of my favorite uh, points of discussion on strip tilling. If you have a state-of-the-art strip tiller and you're putting 350 pounds of uh, fertilizer into that zone, do you need any fertilizer on the planter? 
Now, Greg is putting 10 gallons of 28 down so that he sort of builds some insurance in the nitrogen supply right on the planter, but I think he's open to the question, and I think it's a good one for all growers, especially strip tillers, is if you put a big investment into the strip tiller, can you back the fertilizer off the planter completely? I don't really know the answer to that, but it's a, it's a great question to ask in this whole world of investigating strip tillage. Wow. Hey, um, great story here today. Great machine. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next episode. Absolutely, Bernd. Thanks for being here. Good stuff.